And let's start. Ah, yeah, I already finished this bit here, the service exploits. Um, and I actually didn't understand much when doing this. I just copied and pasted it. Uh, I tried looking for a video that did a bit uh, more explaining on it, like what was going on. Didn't really find much. So, yeah, I'll have to check this out later, but I already finished this as well. This one was fairly simple. Um, yeah, just follow along and you can basically just read the EDC shadow file where the password hashes are stored. And you basically just take the root um, password hash, which should be right here. Uh, you'll find it by right there by cutting it. Hello, Mitch. How's it going, man? You'll find the root. Uh, it was somewhere out there. Okay, there it is. You'll find the root hash right here. You just copy that and you crack it with um, with John, the Ripper. And if you don't know where the hash is, like the hash part is, you can just watch Chat GPT and it's gonna tell you, you know exactly this is the username this is the hash and then this is like just other stuff that you don't really need to crack the hash so yeah that's basically all you need to do these two parts um let's continue now back at it with the early streams yes sir how you doing man how you doing mitch how's your sunday so far we love hash hat show us hat hat please i i, I actually don't really use hash hat Hashcat much like all I've done so far has been with John the Ripper but I guess you know I could also charge you be like how to break it with hack hashcat how to break this hash hashcat I guess the big advantage hashcat has over John the Ripper is you could use GP cracking from what I've heard, right? Yeah, so we need, uh, yeah, the hash type, which is shelf 512 crypt. Uh, I don't know what this means. Prepare the hash. You need to create a file containing the hash, which we already did. It's hash.txt, run hashcat. And then we, so you basically just do that. Hashcat-m, 1800, dash a, zero. I have no idea what the zero means. Okay, there we go. So specify, this specifies Sure. Uh, I'm not bad. Was looking for something to watch. <laughs> not the most entertaining thing, but hey, it's something to watch, I guess. But yeah, this specifies that we the hash is in SHA 512 crypt. The A dash O specifies a dictionary based. Okay. And then hash the text. This is the file, obviously, that contains the hash. And then this is the pass, the path to the word list which we use rock you and after we're done cracking we just say hash m show hash and it's gonna tell you the password as easy as that i'm not gonna do it you know chat gp already kind of show you showed you how to do it there if you want to do it i'm gonna move on here The ETC shadow file contains user password hashes. Okay, yep. It's only readable by the root user, which, you know, is how it should be to make it secure. Note that the um, ETC shadow file is were readable. So, oh, wait, no. Wait, did, wait, no. Did we already? Weak file per. Is it not the same thing? Oh, it's writable. This one is writable. So everybody can. Uh, is word writable, yeah. So anybody can edit it. I do the hello Christian as a gun so you know if anybody can write to it we can add our own you know, our own user in it generate a new password hash with a password of your choice so I'm gonna make password and then we're gonna make the new password just we're just gonna make password we're gonna keep it plain and simple here so just gonna do that and then we're gonna just uh, we're just gonna say the password is password yeah keep it simple here and not something that I'm going to forget so make the password and this is going to be the SHA 512 
separate file. I'm just gonna keep it here. This is gonna be the the hashed password. Password. Edit the etc shadow file and replace the original root users password hash with a one you generated. Switch the root user using. Okay, yeah. So yeah, we don't even have to add the new user. Obviously, we just switch the the password of the root user. So let's nano and etc. Okay, I cannot write etc. Also, okay, nope, 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 nope. I gotta forward slash first. etc. etc. and then shadow. There we go. Nano here, and then we're just gonna replace the hash right here with our very own hash so the hash ends here so everything from here is going to be deleted just going to delete everything from here so do that and then do that and then do that and then do that and then we're just going to copy and paste this hash right here over there so copy it and then we come back right here and then we paste it and there we go and then we save it before we quit so control x to get out of here and then uh, yes to make the changes file name to write to it's gonna stay the same so etc shadow and now if we try to switch user to root the password is gonna be password and Okay, hold up, it isn't working. Hmm. Mm -mm -mm. You're starting cyber security from scratch, or do you have a break? I'm starting from scratch. I started like um six months ago, like in February. February was how many months ago? seven months ago now i guess with the basics like i started from the basics networking you know all the basics basically okay is is the user still uh did i not save it as your root and then uh, what up password is password one two three is it still the same password what was the password earlier hold up what was the password earlier here <clears throat> the password is password one three so i definitely changed the password uh I mean I did make the password pos P A S S W O R D. Did I just not copy the hash correctly or I don't know. Uh, let me nano shadow. Let me nano let me just go in there again. Maybe we screwed up when copying and pasting? I don't know. Uh, maybe I didn't copy the whole thing actually. Hold up, let's get the whole thing here. Copy it, and then let's get the whole thing. Let me full screen this here real quick so I can see it. Um, yeah, that. Let's go over here. Okay. Let's uh, erase everything from this point on. So everything goes away here. And then let's slug it back in. There we go. And now let's exit. Control X to exit. Yes to save it. Am I doing something wrong here guys? Because I honestly have no idea. Alright, now let's try to switch user to root again. Mm, password. Okay. Let me see. How do I? Oh, I don't know. Am I doing something wrong here? I might be. Hold up. Let me just nano. And let me go to shadow. Whoops. Shadow. Again. It's time let me copy this whole thing here. And I'll feed it into ChatGB. And let, I'll ask it to just check this here to see if everything's good. I don't know if I copied everything. Yeah, we did copy everything. I copy. So I'll check that here real quick.
the point is there a point um the point let me just minimize that real quick here the point is the po is the point not part of the hash it has to be it is part of the hash i think I think it's part of the hash. Let me just get rid of it real quick. We'll try it out that way. But I think it is part of the hash here. This dot. I could change the hash again. I could make it something. Well, it doesn't really matter. I could change it to like a simpler hash, I guess. Like we could change it to SHA 256 or something like that. And try it. Let me save it here, see if it works. But I don't know. Um, let's control X, yes, yep, and then let's, two, two, two. and then let's, P-A-S-S, W-R-P, no, it's, it's still the same thing, so I don't know, I don't know where I went wrong here. I don't know where I went wrong here. So root, the hash, and then the other stuff. Where did we go wrong here? I don't know. Let's see the let's see the above ones here. So we had that, and then we had a quote slash. Hmm. 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 Oh wait, hold up. Do we need to salt it? I don't think we need to add a salt to it. Do we have a salt in here right now? No, we don't have salt in here. Uh, yeah, I don't think we have a salt in here right now. Uh, you know what? Let me try to let me try to do like let me try to do like a SHA 512, and I'm I'll make it like a really stupid password like one two three. I mean that doesn't really matter because the the hash is gonna stay the same length. So let me just try to, you know, change the hash type. So make password. This time we're going to change it to SHA-256. Two fifty-six, And I'm going to change the password to hash to like 1234. To make testing easier, you know. To make testing really easier. I don't know if we could, you know, if that works with it password configurations or whatever uh make password dash m hash uh, copy can you get this hash here and we're gonna just copy this and slap this into the nano file and there's everything from here this is gonna disappear okay nope so i have to like actually go in there and erase everything so mm no cancel that that is so much better to like edit stuff by the way compared to vim last time i i use vim i got lost bro like nano is actually a lot easier to use okay is this okay okay i see maybe it's because it's like putting this thing down on another line for some reason hold up let me raise that real quick here there we go now let's add this space. Maybe because it was on different lines. Maybe that's why. Hold on. Now we'll try it again here. All right, there we go. We got the hash. Everything in one line. Just got to get rid of this space real quick here. And then we'll try. So let's save that now. Control X. Save it. Yes. And then we'll write it to GC Shadow. And now let's switch user to... This should work now. Maybe it's because we had a space between... You know, it wasn't the full hash, it was like separate onto different lines, maybe that's why. Switch it to the root and then the password, I'm pretty sure I set it to 1234. You sound South African, or are you from South Africa? No, I'm from I'm from Mauritius, Zico. Wait. Hold up. No. Yeah, I've played against you on FIFA, how nice Zico. Pretty sure we played against each other or something like that. Pretty sure. To get no password prompt. If you remove the whole hash, do you not really? Does it not give you a password? I did not know that that you could remove the whole hash. Let me get all right. Let's this backspace one, two, three, four. 
there we go there we go so it's probably the the problem was probably the fact that um that yeah that there was a big ass space between the hash and and that so yeah yeah i don't know it, it was it was i don't think it was the fact that i used sha 512 i think it was the fact that there was a space between the hash and uh, like the other configuration things that followed so that was probably why there was an error and you know when we got rid of the space between the two lines we joined them together we we fixed it so it's probably why but yeah that's uh we we did that nice very very nice completed <coughs> move on now to uh writable etc is, is this we call it writable oh it's a password file so this one it contains information about oh, sorry information about user accounts it is world readable but usually only writable by the root user this time everybody can write to it so that's not really good historically the etc password file contained user password hashes and some versions of linux will still allow password hashes to be stored there okay Note that the EDC password file is word writable, so I could just change whatever I want in there. All right, cool. Well, we could just test it out. See, I'll, I'll trust them, but you know. Uh, let me just exit out of the first. There we go. And then let's do you that. Know? So, yes, it is writable to everybody, which is not good. Not good at all. All right. Generate a new password hash with a password of your choice. So we're gonna generate that with open SSL password, new password here. So we're gonna do that on our local root machine. So we're gonna save the new password. Again, we're gonna keep it simple. One, two, three, four. For the sake of testing. Open SSL password one, two, three, four. So okay, open what the uh, what algorithm is this? this is like really really small what algorithm is this bro what, is this is this this is a hash right yeah what let me also do the what is this like ssl what's it called what action algorithm is this What even is this? I mean, like, GVD is like... Is it encoded? I don't know. I mean, like, it says it's a hash. Should I have mentioned something? Open SSL password. I am no idea. Let me just say this was used to create it. So we used the one, two, three, four. Okay, there we go. It's a DS encrypted hash. Yeah, this is like depre deprecated, I think is the word. So we don't use this anymore because it's not, it's not secure. Yeah, legacy. Yeah. So you don't want to use it basically. MD5. Yeah, no, we're gonna we're gonna use that because uh, yeah, we don't really need something that's strong or anything like that. Edit the etc password file and replace the generated password hash between the first and second of the root user, replacing the X switch to the root user using the new password. Is that not what I did? Is that literally not what I did? Oh wait, no. Should I? By the way. Should I reset everything after I've... I think I should reset the shadow file. Like, after I, 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 I screwed around with it. But let's say the password for the root user was different on the shadow and the password file. Would they... Would both password work? Or... Would none of them work since, like, it's two different passwords? Would that create an error? I don't know. Uh, we could try that. I don't I, I, like. I don't know. Try that and tell me, guys. I'm too lazy to do it right now. Uh, 
but yeah let's go to the etc and let's nano forward slash etc nope not temp etc and shadow no 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 password so nano in there and then the root is not gonna be x this is gonna be the hash that we're gonna steal from right here we're gonna grab that hash and then we're gonna slap that hash right in there just uh, get rid of this space as well oh shit what did i okay i don't know what i did here let me just erase it and we slap it in and there we go just get rid of okay just gotta make sure this was responsive again there we go now now we can say uh, control x to exit if it's gonna let us here yeah, I don't know why this is bugging right now. Control X to exit. Yes. Save it. And leave everything as it is. Now let's switch user to root again here. Uh, no. Yeah, no. Doesn't really work for root. And then the policy is here. 1, 2, 3, 4. There we go. Who am I? Well, it doesn't say root right there, but I'm just gonna say that because we're done. Thank you for the follow, Trey. How's it going, man? Welcome in. Uh, yeah, we... Yes, we are root. Very nice. And the ID command as a new root user. What is the result ID? Uh, there we go. We are UID 0, group ID 0, and group 0. So we are root. Very nice. Copy that. So that bit over here submit it very nice and we move on this is probably going to be like a bit tougher here this this honestly this like uh this stuff was kind of easy i'm not gonna lie this was very very easy as a matter of fact so yeah all right hold on i got a message here let me answer that real quick Sage, all right, we get it. <clears throat> now let's keep uh, let's keep going. Mm. List the programs which sudo allows the user to run. So I guess we did that with Vim, where Vim had permissions to like pseudo permissions like root permissions and then we, we somehow escaped and got root permissions so. uh i visit uh, and search for some of the program names if the program is instead of pseudo as a function you can use it to write the game That's sudo dash l and see how many we are allowed to run. <clears throat> Sorry, I got some messages here. All right, good. So, yeah sudo dash l which is what we copied so my change the priorities for root on this uh, user root may run the following commands on this call call huh? what what uh, how many i mean oh i am root Bro, it's because I'm rude. It's because I'm rude. I can run everything because I am rude. Oh, yeah. right, there we go. Let's do it again with my user. So, okay, we can write one, two. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Is, is that? Okay, we're going to say 11. It's 11 or 10. It's a two digit number. It's 11 or 10. It is 11. All right, nice. Uh, one program on the list doesn't have a shell escape sequence or GTF of bins, which is it? Uh, let's see. It's uh, 
really long one. It's a very, very long one, so... I'm guessing it's Apache 2? Has to be Apache 2, because it's the... I mean, I'm, I'm going on the former answer here, so we don't have to look. On GTA for Benz, yeah. It's, it's kind of easy, consider how you might use this program with pseudo to gain without a shell. I have no idea. Let's see. With a certain option. But see, this is this is why when there's no write-up, um, you know, it's, it's, it's difficult to play around with this stuff. Because there's literally no write-up to teach you like how to do this, but yeah. It's not something we do. I could literally just like not do this room and just skip it, but for the sake of practice, you know, but I'm gonna go ahead and try to do it. So, um, let's see. Um, the next spanner is that can be used to bypass local security restrictions in this computer system. Project call it legend and functions of um, breakout room to get to <laughs> a breakout of, uh, yeah. Restriction cells escalate or maintain elevated privileges, just so far. Blah 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 blah. Uh, sorry, it is important to note that this is not a list of exploits in the programs listed here are not vulnerable per se, rather, it just means to complete the map to leave up the land when you only have set environments. Okay, cool, cool. Uh, yes, very nice people. Mm. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff here. Let me just um, let me just go to Nano because I kind of like using Nano. So let's control find Nano, you know, and then we want the pseudo, I guess. Pseudo. And if the binary is not run as a CPU is about pseudo, it does not drop the privileges and used to assist the file system. So pseudo nano blah, 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 blah. Do, is that is that all I have to do here? Is that all I have to do here? Let me let me give that to ChatGPT. Let's see. He's gonna do some explaining, probably, right? So let's see. Oh yeah, we so we have super user privileges to execute Nano. So we have a Nano panel open as a super user. is that after resetting the terminal the new user the new user shell the new shell inherits the super user privileges on pseudo nano giving it the user root shell Okay, so we start here by doing pseudo nano. So let's start here, pseudo nano. There we go. And from here on, we do control X, control R, and then control X. So this invokes the read file function in nano. It closes the file, exists nano. So, uh, yeah, control R. 
and then control X and then here we copy that Oh, wait, hold, hold up. Yeah, I guess we... Okay, this is a weird one here. <laughs> this is a very, very weird one here. Uh, yeah, we kind of broke that. It's just going sideways. You can see that we are rude, though, so... Who am I? Yeah, we are rude. Like, it's just not showing any text. So, like... I mean, I was, I was going to do something that only Root can do, but... I mean, I wanted something that only Root can do. I don't know, honestly. I have no idea. Hmm. We could view the extra shadow file. Uh, but, but yeah, I mean, like, we, we are... Like, you literally see that we are Root. I could just exit out of here. So, LS. Oh, yeah. And then again, who am I? Thank you for the follow, J Ray Zay. How's it doing? How's how are you doing? So let's say, who am I? Yeah. So yeah, we can. We, you can see that it's working. We broke it. It's just going very very weird right now. Uh, we're just gonna try to exit out of here. Uh, there we go. So we broke out. We're back out, and we did. We did manage to get a root shell by doing this it's just it was just not the oh thank you for the sub thank you very much for the sub mitch i don't know if like uh wait adzi gifted a sub thank you very much adzi i'm sorry it doesn't show me like gift subs and stuff like that thank you very very much for that um i really appreciate it welcome man i really appreciate that man brand new account and you just drop the follow honestly thank you very much man it helps out a lot because um i use the money from subs donations ad revenue everything to you know pay for track me and stuff like that so it helps out a lot man thank you a lot thank you a lot thank you a lot for the sub <laughs> um but yeah let's go and uh, what was I gonna do now so now we're done with this yeah we're done with this we've already obtained root by breaking or exploiting a certain program being run as root so yeah we've exploited being able to run nano as root and you know while running nano as root we broke out and got access to a root shell so we're pretty much done here uh it wants us to try and uh and obtain root with apache 2 but i'm not gonna do it if you guys figure out how to do it then you can tell me on the youtube you know people watching the vod you guys can, can tell us how you did it uh yeah let's complete that let's move on to environment variables here Again, I think this might be a bit more tough than the previous one. Oh, let's just break out of uh, Nano here. No, we don't want to save anything. And yeah, there we go. We're back to our normal user here. Let's just get that over there. Womp, womp, that didn't really work. And there we go. Perfect. Just off, off. And this one is kind of just. Oops. There we go, perfect. All right, let's go back over here now. <coughs> so, sudo can be configured to inherit certain environment variables from the user's environment. Okay, so this can be configured to inherit certain environment variables from the user's environment. Okay, cool. Check which environment variables are inherited. Look for n keep options. All right, let's do that. And yeah, we are normal user right now so and Risa thank you for the follow ad Z and thank you very much for gifting oh you probably had ads man I'm sorry I'm so sorry about the ads 
Um, but yeah, thank you very much for the follow and thank you for gifting a sub. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate it, man. It really helps me out. Thank you very, very much. And yeah, welcome to the stream, man. And yeah, finally Mitch realizing he got a gift sub <laughs> and being grateful for my boy Adzi. Uh, uh, but yeah, so we have reset, keep, plus LD preload, keep LD library path. I have no idea what this means, but I'm guessing it's going to explain to us here so yeah ld preload and ld library path are both inherited from the user's environment so I'm guessing the reset one is like the default thing here so we got ld preload and ld library path that uh, are both inherited from the user's environment okay cool ld preload loads a shared object before any others when a program is run so it loads a shared object before any others when a program is run LD library path provides a list of directories where shared libraries are searched for first. This doesn't make much sense to me right now, but we're, we're gonna <laughs> gonna try to follow along here. So LD library provides a list of directories where shared libraries. I'm not gonna try to understand the English. It's not my forte. We're gonna try to you know get root here and move on create a shared object using the code located at home user tool pseudo preload c so do i have to be there we're, well we're gonna we're gonna see the change directory and go in there uh gcc Run one of the programs you're allowed to run via pseudo list. So we're gonna run nano again here, while setting the LD preload environment variable to the full pop. Or we could uh, we could do something else, you know, to change it up. We could do any of these. Um, yeah, we could do any of these. Or you know, we have to search uh, get the you know that right there. We gotta search it first and see if we can actually you know get a shell from them um let me cd in there real quick because why not you know don't think uh see, oh hold up cd there we go I'm gonna go in there oh wait no just gotta remove this here so yep there we go we're in there now very nice um and then we have to run this. Let me just ask ChatGPT. ChatGPT is probably going to provide us with a much better explanation to what we're doing here. <laughs> okay, so it's a, it's a compiler which can compile C, C++, and other languages. And this is a C source file. Oh yeah, no, this is, this is some, yeah, this is way out of my league right now. <laughs> Um... Okay. So Yeah, this is just this is just blowing my brains up here. After I complete this, I'll probably need a short break to just reset. Because this is just cooking my brain right now. It's simple, I explain to you. You know programming? A little bit. I did learn a little bit of uh, Python, a little bit of C++, a little bit of um, SQL, and a little bit of JavaScript. But I never really, really, really went like 
fully in depth, you know, it was always like kind of the basics. I never really went like hardcore into programming. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll run this here. Again, I don't know if I had to switch to the to the directory to do it, but we're gonna run it. No, no, I should have run it. Okay, so in C we include files in the start, write, or import in Python to add additional functions. Yes, 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 I know that. Do I need the I do know that little bit. Run one of the programs you ought to run, just pseudo listed when running pseudo now. Well, Setting the LD pro up to the full car. So okay. Run one of the programs you're allowed to run. So run that. Listed one running while setting the preload. So do I do I do this first and then I run the command or do I run the command first and do this? This is what it is, create a shared, uh, okay, to add a shelf, this is what it is, create a shared file so the actual file can make a function call from your file, create a shared file so the actual file can make a function call, so we create a shared file, and we put some stuff in there, and then, And then a file can make a function call from the file that we created, from the shared file that we created. So it just takes some stuff from over there and it just loads it. And I'm guessing the stuff that we load from the shared file is going to be some sort of... Like the X calls a function from a DLL file. Okay. Yeah, no. I, th th this, just, this just shows me that I have so much more to learn. <laughs> you know, like I'm still such a beginner. You know, I have so much more to learn. It's crazy, man. Uh, so, yeah, we already did that. Now, what do we have to do? Do we have to run? It says run the program shell out to run while setting. So, how do I... Do I have... Like... Okay, let me run another one. Let me not run Vim here, because running Vim actually opens something. It opens the... Not Vim. Let's not do Vim or Nano. Let's do, like... um. Let's do, let's do find, let's do the find command here. Let's, let's, uh, so find, find, uh, okay, it's not there. Um, let's say less, FTP, nope, so, do you see the dash shell? I already did it. It's right there. And this is the... These are... I'm guessing Nano and Vim. I mean, I guess Nmap? I guess I could do Nmap. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna just do Nano again. Just do Nano again. Just do Nano again. Right, let's... Uh, pseudo Nano again here. So... Pseudo Nano again here. There we go. And then create a shared object using the code... I should probably have done this first, right? I should probably have done this first. Hold on. Do this first. Yeah. Yeah, I got that much. Password for user. Uh, what the hell was my password here again for user? Uh, it was somewhere on the start, right? So, po okay, password 3 to 1. Okay. So you need to leverage together. I did it before with uh, with Nano, and it, and it already gave me root. Like I didn't have to do all this. Like I just exploited Nano, and I just used this in Nano. Like I pseudo Nano. I did these two commands, and then I tapped that, and it gave me a a root shell. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, that, that makes sense, so, nano, over here, nano, 
There we go. Oh, there we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. It was as easy as that. So we didn't have to go through nano. Yeah, we got roots. So all we had to do, all we had to do, basically, was go ahead, check which applications we can run as a super user as root, and then, uh, you know, we basically use this, which again doesn't make much sense to me. And then we did that with the program name that we can run while being a super user, and then we get a root shell. Exit the shell before continuing. Depending on the program you choose, you may need to exit out of this as well. Run IED against Apache 2 program to see which shared libraries are used to the program. So, yeah, wait, what's the. Okay, yeah, nothing to do down here, so we're just keep going to keep going. So, run that. Is it IDD or LDD? I have no idea. It's, it wants us to get out of root first, though, so, yeah. Exit out of the shell. So, exit out of here. And then, exit out of here. And then let's do that. So what did that do now? Linux, blah, 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 blah. I have no idea what any of this means. Or well, quite honestly, I have zero idea what any of this means, honestly. All right. Create a shared object with the same name as one of the listed libraries. Lip trip on. I might just copy after I'm done with this I might just copy the whole thing and ask chat GP like what the hell I'm doing here <laughs> you know like I might I might get it to summarize everything here because there's no image yeah there's no image here, so it's probably gonna be able to do a good explanation for us here uh, yeah all right did that So LDD is just to show which file is being shared by Apache to here. So, okay. So we know what file. Okay, yeah. So we know what file Apache two can call a function from. So when like we run Apache, it can call that function. Basically, I'm guessing. Let trip. Okay, 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 okay. And then this should. So now when we when we run Apache as you super user as a root should make a call towards the shared file or whatever and then it's going to open a, a root shell for us so let's do that there we go all right and then we're going to sudo apache nope uh, sudo apache 2 so we run that library path temp and again that, that also gives us a root then change the function inside the shared file so when the function is called it will run your function instead of the intended function yeah so instead of running you know the default function it runs the function that we want it to, to run which is the function that's going to give us root I guess yeah, this is like really, really complicated. It's not really complicated stuff. I guess you don't really need to know like everything that's going on in the bag. It's good to know it, but like, I guess as you keep getting used to it, as you keep doing it, you're probably going to get used to it and it's going to be like second nature, you know. Root shell, she's going to either shell, try running it, temp, put to the name of the user I put you in. A root shell should spawn, exit out of the shell, try renaming uh, to the name of a lot of the hmm. 
is that a shell try renaming TMP log to the name of my old library needs by which to do and rerun. Uh, I mean, it should normally not work, right? Because we did do something over here. Okay, you know, I, I, I don't really get much of what this is here. Honestly, this is like, this cooked my brain. I'd probably, you know what, let's get, let, let's, let's feed it to ChatGPT. And we're going to ask it to explain it to us. Like we're five year old or something, you know. And explain it to us. Like dumb it down for me, real quick. Uh, Okay. Okay, so we compile the shared object, so we compile that, okay, and then it, we inject this shared object into a program, okay, so we inject it into a program name, so we chose nano here, if the privilege it contains privilege version code, which is on a root shell, oh, okay, 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 I got it, so we basically just inject it, into a shared object of a program so you're allowed to run as root and then if it contains privilege escalation code when we run the program it like basically just fetches you know the i basically when we run python code you know it imports stuff like import the library you know when we run nano in this case it's going to try to import the the libraries to run it and then since we have this this you know this malicious code that's injected into the object it's gonna run that first and it would when it runs that first it basically just gives us a shell like before it does anything else so that's why you get a shell and then when you exit the, out of the shell you know everything else runs in the background and then you get the, the nano so that's that's what i kind of understood you know it's probably just maybe i i didn't understand it correctly but yeah, you know, this is this is not really simple stuff here in my opinion. Hmm. Ah, this this kind of cooked my brain here, man. I'm not gonna lie. This is dead. This did cook my brain just a just a tiny just a tiny little bit. Just a tiny little bitty bit here. Tiny little bitty bit here. Uh, hmm. Why is my uh, let me refresh my alerts and stuff like that here real quick. Refresh that. Refresh that. Oh, sound alerts. Wait, did I disable my... Did I disable my shit here? Wait, I don't know. I don't know. Whatever. Cool. Let's go... Mm. No, I think, I think it's time I took a little break here before we continue. I'm gonna take a short break here, like a short three minute something ish break, and I'll be right back in a little bit here. We, we, I mean, like, there's gonna be ads in a bit here anyway, so I'll just run ads now, and then when I get back, you know, there won't be ads for a while, so I'll be right back in like five ish minutes here.
Mm, just quickly check if my chat is working correctly. So, yeah, I think again, we're good. Let's get back to it. All right, current jobs or programs or scripts which users um, can schedule to run at specific times or intervals, cron table files, cron tabs store the configuration for cron jobs okay so cron jobs basically run at sigil times or intervals at cron tabs they store the configuration for these cron jobs all right the system one cron tab is called is located at etc uh cron tab view the contents of the system one cron tab fluids quickly view that cat etc cron tab and let's just exit out of here before we do that uh yep no right okay all right so okay yep so we know now what we are running we have cd and run part test uh, let me just open this in full screen so we can understand a bit better there we go um so this is happening every seven minutes this is happening every six hour and five minutes so corona daily on weekly and this is called monthly uh, rate user has been an alright sh okay that's the stuff that's gonna run all right cool and there should be two cron jobs scheduled to run every minute one runs or write those edges so i run so okay yeah no okay good this okay so these this means that they run every minute. If there's nothing, this means that they run every minute. So yeah, override.sh and this. So they run every minute. Locate override.sh, note that this file is readable, so it's gonna be... Okay. I mean, like, normally we would have to, like, search... Um... Over... Um... Uh, let me just simply remove. And then we would have to search over the sh. How do how do I hold on? Oh shit! What did I just close? I don't know. Oh, it's a crack station. I don't want to use that right now. All right. How how to find a file? I mean, everything is false in Linux, so. I guess we can call it fun. <clears throat> okay, it's not search, it's fine. So fine. Dash A. So fine dash. Uh, read. Find. Dash. Read. Search everything from read. No, there's no dash. So find read and then name. Fine, root, root dash name, and then we're gonna go with that, and then the name is gonna be override oh, right, this is override. I know it already gave me the path, but I just want to like practice searching for stuff. So sage, and I should probably have uh, done. Dev null something to just send all of the errors to. Mm, how to filter out errors? I think it's like dev null something, right? Yeah, there we go. So to dev null. There we go. 
it's the last place to find. I found it and it's right there. Use your local bin over SH. That's perfect. Alright, let's LS dash L to see that it is world readable. Mm, yes, everybody can read it. Everybody can actually write to it as well. You know, right there. Everybody can write to it. Which is a bit weird. Read, write, execute, read for a group, and then everybody can read and write to it. Which, yeah, I don't know about that. Replace the contents of the overwork file with a file. After the changing, okay, so let's nano into it. Nano in there. There we go, and then uh, replace the contents of the override.sh file. So we're gonna get it to run that every minute, and I'm guessing this is gonna open a shell for us here. that in dev bash bash i dev the and then we just replace our own opinion i'm guessing we're gonna set a yeah we're gonna set up a listener on your box so we for the cron job to run which should could be a ticket unless it doesn't reject the permission of the file is anything missing i don't know you tell me bro all right uh yeah so we're gonna change our ip in here so our ip is currently Send dot ten dot two hundred and eighteen hundred and eighteen dot two hundred and twenty three ten ten hundred and eighty two hundred twenty three and then we're gonna keep it out here save it yes and then just keep it how it is so it's all saved and now let's set up a netcat and Okay. That VLP looks weird. Netcat. It's usually LVNP. Yeah, it's not NV. Yeah, it's usually NVNP. You're right, but it's it doesn't really matter as long as it's got all the commands and then four 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 four. So we're gonna wait for a connection from that, and it should take uh, no more than one minute normally. And if it does not, you know, if it does not connect back to us within a minute, then uh, there's probably a problem here. Um, but normally this should work. Normally it should work here. Yeah, should not take longer than a minute. Uh, it doesn't reach the permissions of the file. Oh, do I need to like... Oh, maybe it's not executable. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Need your control in the shell. So we got the connection here. But it says no job control in the shell. Huh. <laughs> we can read, but we can't execute it. So maybe we need to change permissions here. Such a mod. X. Let's chmod it here. Let's try to give it execute permissions. So chmod plus x plus x. Operations not permit. So yeah, I can't change it here. No job control in the shell, huh? So what is wrong here? We got the connection back. It says bash no job control. What does that mean? What does that mean? What does that mean? What does that mean? Alright, uh, let me just copy this. I'm gonna feed this into shot GPT here. Let's see what Mr. GPT has to say to us. Alright. <clears throat> yeah, I don't really care that we fit free limit. Yep, alright, cool. 
see entries we saw that mm -hmm. yep we found out that it's over there check the cloud world readable you should see something like this uh no 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 we did not see something like that Okay, yes, yeah, so it's not executable right now. It is not executable, so I like... I can't even make it executable, so... I don't really need that anymore. I'll slide over there in case we need it later on. Uh oh wait, no 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 there we go, we got it, we got it, we we got it, we got it. We we are, we are. No, this isn't yeah. We got a root shell. I'm done. It's literally there we go, root at Debian. No. Am I? I am a root. Let's uh I mean I just say the last back. Back. Uh, working directory, we are in post slash root, uh, ls cd of root, ls, there we go, we got some random ass stuff here, and uh, I'm not gonna mess with the cd home actually, cd home, cd users and stuff like that, and then ls, uh, and then cd user, yeah, yeah, that's we we got the root shell though. We got the root shell, which is what matters. That's perfect. Um, um yeah, that's cool. Exit out of the shell and remove the reverse shell code before continuing. Um, you know what? I'm gonna. Hmm. Unfortunately, it's not the way to learn if you're copying and looking at French GPT. You should look at what the command means and why we are using it etc i mean that's what i'm kind of trying to figure out you know that is what i'm kind of trying to figure out i don't think i need to like i kind of get what we're doing you know we are basically a cron tab is basically something that runs automatically every once in a while and we found one that runs every minute we found the location of it here and we replaced it with this uh, code that gives us a reverse shell. We started a netcat listener on our machine and once it was time for it to run, it ran and it connected back to us. So that's pretty much what happened here. I kind of understood what happened, but I was like, you know, why did I not get root? Because I was confused because I saw, you know, no job control in the shell. And I was like, wait, what's going on? But no, we already had root right there. Root at Debian. We did get, uh, we did get root on our machine right there. I just didn't realize that, which is why I was asking ChatGB, you know, what the hell's going on? But we actually had root. <laughs> you know, we actually had root, which I did not realize because I am sometimes uh, very, very stupid. You know, very, very stupid sometimes. <laughs> Um, 
do a shortcut. I'm not gonna bother about you know removing and all that because um, well I didn't save previous code. <laughs> I didn't save actually like what was actually in the clone job. And you know, anyways, when we close this machine, it's gonna reset. Like it's it's like amnesiac or whatever. So whenever we stop using it, it's gonna basically forget whatever we did do it here. So I'm just gonna close it and probably gonna end stream here and then i'm gonna do a bit more of this next time maybe later on tonight i'll get back on it do i do some more of these here but yeah for now i'm gonna end stream did I, we did we did make a little bit of progress in here you know we did load a little bit and yeah i'm just gonna close it here and stream and yeah guys i'll see you guys later on tonight bye bye have a good night thank you everybody for watching here I appreciate y'all. Thank you, everybody that followed today. You know, J Reze, Trey, and Adzi. And again, thank you very much, Adzi, for the gifted sub. I appreciate that a lot. It helps out a lot, man. And uh, yeah, let me quickly see if there's anybody to read out to here. If not, we're just gonna call it a day. Uh, I mean. Uh, Oh, you can actually ask people to collaborate and stuff now. Oh, that's interesting. Why use Windows when installing Debian on a physical machine? What do you mean? Why use Windows when installing Debian on a physical machine? Why use Windows when installing Debian? I am lost. I mean, maybe because you already have Windows installed, you know. Like, what, what would you use to install Debian on a physical? Like, if you want to replace Windows with um, Debian, what you would do is you would create a bootable USB device. And I did it, like, twice. I installed Linux Mint on my laptop, and then I replaced it with Kali Linux. What you do is you basically get a USB, a bootable USB, and you just... Um, uh, like write the ISO file, I think that's what I called the ISO file for whatever OS you want to the bootable USB. You basically make it into a boot bootable USB and you can use Balina Etcher for that. And then once you've done that, you can basically just plug in the USB and make sure that you go into your BIOS settings and you know, you boot into that. Or, you know, if you're on Windows, you could just press, I think, restart and then shift. And it's going to give you the option to boot from USB. And then you can boot into the USB. And then once you're, uh, you're, you've done that, you could basically go ahead and, you know, select. It's going to give you the option to install um, that OS permanently. For example, if you're on Linux. It's going to ask you, it's going to give you the installation options and then, you know, you go and you follow that. Plenty of tutorials online available on YouTube and lots of other platforms if you want to, you know, see how to install that. Um, but yeah, that's it for me here. I'm going to probably going to read that to Andrew here for the day. I don't think he has a mic actually, which it's not really ideal here. I don't have anybody else though to read that to. Let me sick check if. I don't know if InfoSec streams actually is working. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I I think I'm the only one live in here right now, so. It is working, but there's nobody else streaming InfoSec right now that I could read out to. So, um, I think we just call it a day here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm just gonna read that to unchit them. Cool day here, guys. Um, yeah, raid to my boy unchit here. Bye bye, bye bye, Adzi. And again, thank you very much, man, for being here today and for gifting the sub. I really appreciate it. Um, it really helps out, you know, with paying for my subscriptions and stuff like that. So I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. and I hope you have a great day, as, uh, as well as, you know, anybody else watching right now, guys, take care. 
have a lovely lovely rest of your day and i will see all of you legends maybe later on tonight if i decide to stream if not maybe tomorrow whenever i decide to stream again take care guys no worries i appreciate you rz mitch uh ghost zarafros anybody else here right now you know that was in the stream today appreciate you all guys deadpool as well love you bro and yeah i'll see you guys next time bye bye i'm out